Hello everyone. In my last video, I explained a coil gun that uses an SCR as a switch. So, and I also explained the limitation of an SCR as a switch, that is the controlling of the on time. So once a coil like this one is energized, the projectile is pulled inside the coil. And once the projectile crosses the center of the coil, the current should be switched off. Otherwise, the, the projectile as this proceeds, you know, it is pulled back towards the coil if the on time is longer. So controlling the on time is very important. In SCR circuit, this on time depends on the uh, inductance of the coil and the capacitor that is associated with this coil. So higher the voltage, higher the current and the higher the speed. And on time, on time should also be controlled lower at that point. So to precisely control the on time, in this project, I'm going to use a MOSFET. I'll explain how we should use a MOSFET as a switch and what type of MOSFETs are needed. And I also show uh, the variation of the speed with the variation of the on time. Uh, this is the photo of the entire coil gun system with the MOSFET switching circuit. As I explained in my last video, when this switch is on, the magnetic field around the coil will attract this ferromagnetic projectile. The attractive force will accelerate the speed of the projectile. When the projectile crosses the center of the coil, the switch should be off. In my last project, uh, I show how an SCR can act as an electronic switch. This time, I am going to use a MOSFET as a switch. This is the basic SCR switching circuit that I used previously. Once the SCR is triggered, the on time depends on the coil inductance and the value of the capacitor. However, to get maximum possible speed, we need to have a better control over the on time. In this diagram, the SCR is replaced with a MOSFET. With this circuit, the on time depends on the on time signal applied at the gate. You may have seen electromechanical relay like this one here and there though it is a very old part existed over a century and still exists in many modern electronic system to drive this kind of relay you will often find a very simple circuit like this one when the voltage is applied at the base of the transistor higher collector current, energize the relay coil and the coil is activated, the relay is activated. And when this voltage is off, the relay is also off. Simple. Yes. No, there is another problem. When the collector current is off, the sudden change in current through an inductor uh, creates a very high voltage at the collector you can see the sudden change and creates a very high voltage and that will damage the transistor so to get rid of this thing it is always you'll find that always a diode is associated with the coil so once the switch is off the current or the stored energy in the inductor uh, is recirculated through the uh, with this diode and the waveform, you can see here, the current through the coil switches off and slowly decaying. Now we learn the history of driving a coil safely. We can apply the same kind of knowledge here for the safe operation of the coil gun. We can place a diode across the coil and it is done. But there is a problem. Our coil gun uses a very low resistance coil. You can see the resistance is 0.6 ohm and inductance is 635 microhenry. 
if we use a diode across the such a coil once this switch is off the current will decay slowly and so our on time is again going out of our control so to achieve faster current decay we can add a resistor in series with the diode we must choose a diode which can dissipate enough power let us see a practical example for an effective coil gun current may reach as high as 100 amp so for 100 amp coil current the stored energy is 3.2 uh, joules this much energy should be dissipated uh, once the coil is off so far i drew a bipolar junction transistor as a switch for simplicity in practice it is better to use a mosfet or igbt as a switch for several reasons mosfets or igbts are easy to drive as it does not need high driving power voltage drop across the mosfet drain and source is lower which improves the efficiency and very fast high power mosfets are available at a cheaper price resistor associated with the diode should be chosen carefully for the protection of the mosfet as well as uh, to maintain quicker decay of coil current too high a value for this resistor means fast decay of the coil current however a large drain voltage can kill the mosfet the resistor power handling capability should also be considered as well uh, before practically building any circuit i usually use circuit simulation LT Spice is a very powerful electrical and electronic circuit simulation software and it is free anybody can download from this website in future in a video I'll try to explain the basics of the LT Spice so that people can learn it easily if someone is interested can visit my website for LT Spice tutorial as well so this is my website I'll show some simulation result here, which nicely matches what I found practically. First, I'll show a circuit with this diode only. There is no resistor connected with this diode. Once the MOSFET gate voltage is on, the current in the coil starts rising. It starts rising. As the capacitor stored energy is being drained out, the current starts to decay a little. And then when the gate voltage is off, the current is decaying slowly. We want the coil current to go zero at this point. However, in practice, it is not like that. Now I'm going to do another simulation with this one ohm resistor with the diode now you can see the mosfet is when the mosfet is off the coil current decays faster than previous circuit but look at the drain voltage the blue one its peak is also going higher so we have to choose a mosfet which uh, not only can withstand the coil current of 100 amp but also it, it can stand more than 140 volt this is the circuit that i used to drive the coil a triple five timer ic is used as a mono stable multi vibrator once this trigger button is pressed we'll get a pulse of duration which can be controlled by this variable resistor of 10k Uh, the trigger pulse and the output pulse uh, of the mono stable multi vibrator is shown here once this button is pressed you can see a very sharp pulse is generated at pin 2 of triple five timer and at the output the, we can get a pulse 
and the pulse width can be varied using this potentiometer. So varying the resistor from 0 to 10K, we can get uh, at the output of pulse width 1.5 millisecond to 13.5 millisecond. Uh, this is the practical coil driver circuit that I built. Uh, the MOSFET I used uh, is uh, FDL150F and it can stand up to 400 drain source volt, 400 volt drain to source and average current uh, up to 100 amp and pulsed current 400 amp. In our case, the peak current is uh, approximately 100 amp, which can be considered as a pulsed current. And this is a fast recovery diode and the one ohm uh, high power resistor. And this is the potentiometer. The whole setup is shown here. I used 110 volt and 160 volt supplies to test. This time, I added one more capacitor of 500 microfarad. So in total, I'm getting 4,000 microfarad capacitance. Uh, this is the formula that can be used to calculate the speed of the projectile out of a coil gun. So this is the plot, current versus speed. And uh, it, during the on time, the average current in my case is around 90 amp. So the calculated speed should be more than 60 meter per second. But in my case, I found 35 meter per second. The on time of the coil varied from 1.5 millisecond to 13 millisecond. And I found maximum achievable speed around 35 meter per second. Uh, within the range of 3 to 5 millisecond. Uh, this is the switching circuit for the coil, the triple five timer. This is the MOSFET. And this is the resistor with the diode. And this is the potentiometer to change the pulse width. And this is the coil. And here is the push button switch for two trigger. And this is the capacitor combination around 4000 microfarad. And this is the 160 volt power supply. So first I'm testing the uh, trigger signal as you can see on the scope screen. Once the button is pressed, a very sharp pulse is there. Several microsecond in length. Now at the output, you can see once the trigger button is pushed, uh, we can get a pulse at the output and we can change the pulse width using the potentiometer. It is uh, widening yeah, from 1.5 millisecond to around 13 millisecond. I can change the pulse width. Now this is the first test with 2.1.5 millisecond. So you can see the speed is not much. Now the pulse width is increased to 2.5 millisecond. So with 2.5 millisecond You'll see the speed now. So it is getting better. Now it is increased to around 3.5 millisecond. So even it gone up a little. Now it is increased to above 4 millisecond, around 4.5 millisecond. Okay. 
so this is another view so it is the highest speed I got now you can see the pulse it is increased all the way to 12 millisecond and speed is reduced from the previous setting.